Welcome to the Finer Femininity Catholic Women's Podcast, a podcast for Catholic women with traditional values, women who are striving for sanctity, learning to be more joyful and feminine in their vocations by studying Our Lady, the saints, and revered Catholic men and women. And now your host, mother of 11, grandmother of 26, Leanne Vanderputten. This little excerpt called Conscience is taken from the great little book called Helps to Happiness by Father John Carr, CSSR, has the imprimatur in 1962. Conscience. You want me to tell you all about conscience? A tall order if there ever was one. You may not know, but there are whole rows of grim-looking tomes on the subject. Anyhow, I'll tell you a thing or two that may be of use. Now, the conscience I am speaking of is the judgment our reason passes, not on something we have done, bringing approval or remorse, but on something we are about to do, telling us it is right or wrong. Are you listening? Not hard or easy, pleasant or unpleasant, profitable or unprofitable, but lawful or unlawful in the eyes of God. This conscience has a tiny, quiet voice, but it can shout down the wildest passions. It is beyond bribes and knows no fear. Conscience can have various qualities, some good, some bad. To begin with, it can be true, telling us that an act is right or wrong, which is really right or wrong. Thus, it is really wrong to steal. And so my conscience is true when it forbids me to help myself to the contents of Mr. So-and-so's cash box. When our conscience is true, we must obey it, of course, doing what it enjoins and not doing what it forbids. But now our conscience may tell us that an act is right or wrong, which is really not so at all. In other words, it is mistaken. Erroneous is what the grim-looking tomes call it. What are we to do? It all depends on whether we suspect the mistake or not. If we don't, then, when this erroneous conscience tells us we may do something, we are safe in doing it. And when it bids or forbids us to do something, we are obliged to obey it. Thus, if I really think today is a day of abstinence, though in reality it is not, I am bound to abstain, and vice versa. On the other hand, if we notice or suspect that our conscience is mistaken, may we go blindly ahead? May we follow a doubting conscience, to quote the grim-looking tomes again? Certainly not. We must try to find out the truth. Thus, we have a genuine doubt, I'm not talking about mere scruples, concerning the lawfulness of certain practices in the matter of purity or justice. If we advert to this doubt and to the obligation of settling it, we sin in not settling it. I have mentioned the word scruples. Some think they are scrupulous and yet they are just what they should be and no more. They shun the smallest lie, are honest even in pence and half pence, won't take part in unkind talk and the like. In other words, they fear the smallest sin. They have not a scrupulous conscience, but a tender, sensitive one, quick to register right and wrong. The English dictionary is a bad guide here. A scrupulous conscience fears sin groundlessly. Tis not a good thing, but a bad thing. Tis not a sort of spiritual finery to be displayed with pride, but something undesirable and fruitful of untold mischief and misery. It can ruin and, in countless cases, has ruined body and soul alike. Though, as St. Alphonsus, a specialist in the matter, says, to decide whether a penitent is scrupulous or not belongs not to the penitent, but to the confessor. Still, there are certain telltale symptoms that should make the penitent suspect the evil thing. Obstinacy in holding to one's views. Consulting many confessors and obeying none always making sure that the confessor understands the case, fear of sinning in everything and changing the mind for trifling motives. The one infallible specific medicine is obedience. An obedient soul was never lost, says St. Philip Neri, 
another specialist in this painful business. A right attitude towards God will help, but nothing will replace obedience. The reverse of a scrupulous conscience is a lax one. The scrupulous tend to make sin out of nothing, the lax to make nothing out of sin. Laxity is to be feared particularly in matters concerning the Sixth and Seventh Commandments. A lax conscience can become seared or callous, and long habits of sin can make the worst of sins hardly seem sin at all. The ideal conscience is the true and tender one. You will get it by prayer, by listening to sermons, reading good books, taking good advice, keeping good company, and going often and well to confession. Whom the cap fits, there are several caps in this talk. Try them on. I hope some won't fit you. Thank you for joining us today. Please stop by the Finer Femininity website to enjoy articles on the single life, the married life, raising children, and the spiritual life, all written by solid Catholic authors. You can follow Finer Femininity on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. God bless you, and see you next episode. Thank you.